I'm Nicole Pulley. Welcome to a special broadcast report. In the 2010 midterm election, Republicans gained a net 63 seats from the Democrats and retook control of the House of Representatives. The significant change was the highest total victory for a single party in nearly half a century, which came off the heels of high employment, historical health care reform, and in the wake of a recession. With the majority led by Speaker John Boehner and former Nancy Pelosi as the minority leader, the Democrats find themselves defending their progressive agenda while curbing the national debt. Many Democrats who picked up difficult seats in 2006 and 2008 were unable to survive the midterm election. Connecticut's Jim Himes, however, maintained his seat. And so why does much of America believe that, you know, we're acting in the interest of ourselves or of special interest, how do you explain the, let's give ourselves the benefit this week and say the 20% approval rating that the Congress has? It's an interesting question. Is it that we're failing to represent the American people? Representing the 4th District of Connecticut, Congressman Jim Himes was able to weather the storm and return to Washington for his second term. Born in Lima, Peru to American parents, he spent the early years of his childhood in Peru and Colombia and was raised with a unique perspective of the United States. Democrats always make the mistake of thinking that the facts and the arguments win, when the fundamental question is, do I have a personal connection with you? Do, do you like my values? Do you sort of sense that I'm a good, trustable guy? Because you may not like where I am on the public option, but you know what, you kind of get me, and so I'm going to send you back to Washington. That's the connection that is made. That's what keeps me in front of uh, my people. He later went on to attend Harvard University and earned a Rhodes Scholarship, after which he attended Oxford. Himes began his professional career at Goldman Sachs, where he worked his way up to vice president over the course of 12 years. In 2003, Himes left the company to join the New York City branch of the Enterprise Company Partners, a nonprofit dedicated to addressing the unique challenges of urban poverty. Implementing new green technologies through his work for Enterprise, Himes achieved energy efficiency and reduced utility costs. Where do you see green technology and solar panels and wind power going in the next five years? Well, they better go. I mean, I may, or maybe the better way to put it is they better come, right? I mean, you know, uh, for, two, for, for at least three reasons. One, uh, national security. You know, we have to be less beholden to places like Saudi Arabia and the Mideast than we are uh, today. Uh, number two, uh, you know, though there is a ludicrous argument about the reality of climate change, it's serious and we need to address it. And number three, and arguably most immediately important, um, clean energy and, and alternative energy sources means lots of jobs and growth. You know, we, we led the IT revolution in this country. Companies like IBM, Microsoft, Google, they're here. Whatever their equivalents are in the next wave of energy, it's not clear that they will be here because Europe and Asia are saying we're going to get serious about it and we're not saying that yet. Any one of a hundred different sources for news, we can tailor the news we receive to our prejudices. And so it becomes about the reinforcing of prejudice rather than the provoking of thought. Congressman Himes, you touched upon media bias and polarization. Do you believe the country has moved from a nation of we to a nation of me? Yes, but, but let me put it this way. I'm not, there's clearly media bias, but what concerns me more is not that there's media bias. There's, I think, probably always been media bias. It's more that um, technology has given us the ability to uh, watch and absorb only that information which makes us feel good. And so you see people of different political opinions only watching those shows or journalists that reinforce what they already believe. And that means that uh, none of us are being uh, provoked to think differently by an alternative point of view. So while it is important to incorporate social media into the political atmosphere, like you mentioned, it's important to go back to the traditional roots as uh, previous broadcasters had done before. Yeah, well, I think you know the, the 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 internet in general and social media in particular. There's a huge opportunity there. I mean, I can I can get on my BlackBerry right now and you know with my 2,500 Twitter followers, tell them what I'm doing or what I think instantaneously. I mean, that that's never been possible. It was never imaginable. Uh, you know, email technology, Facebook, all of this stuff allows me to communicate in a two-way fashion in many instances with constituents, and that's never been true. 
But that same kind of fragmented world also means that I can pick and choose, which is good, but, but it means that most people are going to pick and choose the opinions and maybe even the facts that they, uh, that they like. Jim Himes' latest task involves tackling the federal deficit, as the United States is now $14 trillion in debt. There's two areas in this budget where more than 50% of Americans agree cuts should occur. One is unemployment insurance, the other one is foreign, operate, foreign aid. Foreign aid, foreign aid, which is less than 1% of our budget. Every other category, and by the way, those two things combined are less than a point and a half, percent of, uh, and a half of our budget. Every other category, when you actually ask them about education, spending, no, don't cut that. Medicare, no, don't cut that. FBI, no, don't cut that. Really? Highways? No, don't cut that. Every other category of spending receives less than 50% approval in terms of do we cut that thing. To read the latest news on Congressman Himes, visit his website, himes.house.gov. And to view other special broadcasts, including interviews with Rudy Giuliani and Congressman Wexler, visit our website, specialbroadcast.auatv.com. This has been another special broadcast. Thank you for watching.